Welcome to or welcome back to Miss Finance. On today's episode we're going to look through student finance, in particular student credit cards, and we're going to delve into the pitfalls of credit cards, specifically what not to do. Before you go ahead and apply for a credit card, there are a few things that you need to think about. So the first one being, what is your current credit score? And if you don't know what that is, there are certain ways that you can you can see that for free. So don't ever pay to see your credit score. Your credit score should be free, and if it's not free, then move on. Have a look at something like Credit Karma, which I've always used, always gives me my full credit score with a very detailed report and often gives me ways of improving my score. So have a look at your credit score. Now student credit cards work in the same way as a normal credit card, but they typically have no annual fee to pay and they usually offer you quite a low rate of credit to stop you from spending too much credit. For a lot of students, your student credit card is your first credit card and so there's a lot of terminology that goes with that, that you might have a little bit of trouble understanding. So in today's video I'm going to go through exactly what those terms mean and how you can make the most out of your credit card to hopefully build your credit report and allow you to take out credit at a lower rate in future. Now one of the main benefits of a student credit card is that they actually help you to build your credit report and your credit history. Now as long as you make the minimum payments every single month or you pay off that amount in full to avoid any interest then student credit cards can be really useful because in a lot of cases they give you rewards back in the form of vouchers or money off which can be useful when you come to buy say a laptop or some other equipment that you require for your course. Now there are also some disadvantages to taking out a student credit card. One of them being that if you borrow more than you can actually pay back obviously you're going to have some debt issues there. They also don't always offer the best interest rates available. You could find yourself paying more interest than what you really should be doing in comparison to other credit cards if you don't pay off that amount every single month. The other thing to consider that student credit cards actually take into account your income so if you're looking for a, quite a large purchase to make and you're thinking of doing that through a student credit card probably not the best way to go because they're not really going to give you a large amount of credit in the first place and also the interest rates as stated before are not going to be exactly great. Now you want to be checking the annual percentage rate on any card that you're thinking about applying to. They will abbreviate this to APR in the text and that is the percentage of interest that you're going to be paying annually. So if they say something like 24% APR which is quite high you'll be dividing that by 12 to give you the monthly APR, so the monthly interest rate that you'll be paying on that card should you not pay off the amount in full every single month. The next thing to consider is the penalty charge. In a lot of cases, again dependent on the credit card itself, you could have a penalty charge, an annual penalty charge, so it's almost like an admin charge that they'll add on top of what you're paying, so it could be £30, £40. It's useful to make sure that you're aware of the annual penalty charge that you could be facing. The other thing to consider is penalty charge differs credit card by credit card for going over your credit limit. Some might charge £30 a day, some might charge just a standard £30 per month for going over or missing payments they'll also charge you there. It's worth reading the small text, could end up in a very very bad situation if you haven't paid your bill on time or if you just missed a payment by mistake. The key here is never to spend more than you can pay back with a credit card. Be smart, don't fall into the traps. So where a credit card company offers you £15,000 as a credit limit, that does not mean that you should spend £15,000 and we'll go into that a little bit later. Always, always, always make sure that you are in control of your money, that you are responsible with your money before you take out any credit card. The questions you should be asking yourself is, can you use that credit card responsibly? Or do you think that you might be tempted and spend money that you don't necessarily necessarily have or that you're unable to pay back. One key thing to check, particularly with student credit cards in comparison to other credit cards, is whether or not you are able to use that abroad because in a lot of cases you can't and not just that, if you do use it abroad and you're able to use it abroad, what fee are they going to be charging you on that card? Because there are other cards available to you that you could be using instead of that. There are also eligibility criteria to meet in order to get a student credit card. So you have to be a student, you have to have a student bank account, you have to have lived in the UK for three years and you have to be able to provide evidence that you are taking a course that lasts the duration of a minimum of two years. And finally that you are a legal adult of the age of 18 plus. Questions that you might have is do I need to be earning an income in order to be approved for the student credit card? And the answer is sometimes, but not always. Sometimes you are required to have other income other than the loans or benefits that you might be receiving from um, your university. And again, this is not always necessary, but it definitely will help towards being approved for a student credit card. My top tips with a student credit card, pay off the amounts in full 
every single month and by doing this you're going to avoid any interest payment and where it's just not possible for you to do this then make sure that you're making at least the minimum repayments every single month and if you want to check what your minimum repayments are log in to your credit card account and if you don't have one you can always actually call the credit card company and just ask but in a lot of cases this will be a certain percentage of of the balance currently on the credit card another top tip is never ever use your credit card for money so do not use your card to make cash withdrawals. There's many reasons for this. Firstly, it's because the credit card company does not know what you're using that money for. So for all they know, you could be using that money to buy drugs. Quite far-fetched. So they don't like people using cash withdrawals on a credit card. So what they'll do is they'll just up the interest. If you're in a really sticky situation and you absolutely have to have some cash of some kind, whatever you do, just do not use your credit card. Find another ways and means. Go and ask the grandparents, go and ask parents, siblings, friends, whoever can possibly give you that cash because using your credit card is just going to lead to more fees, more interest, more amounts payable, and that is not a route that you want to take. Another pitfall that people fall under, this was something that, again, that I didn't understand when I was a teenager with my first credit card. They offered me a £1,000 credit limit. So instantly, you think, and being a student, I have a £1,000 to spend. Well, here's the unfortunate truth. You don't. You should only be spending approximately 10% to 25% of your credit limit. And I know a lot of people say 30%, but having personally experienced this myself, I used 30% of my credit limit and my credit um, score actually went down. So I'd recommend always sticking to only 25% of your credit limit spend on any single credit card. Say you have three cards, each with £3,000. This does not mean that on one of those cards, you can then spend 50% of the total credit and then say 10% and 10% on the others. So in total, you spent 70% and you think, oh, divide that by three. I'm only therefore spending 23% of the total credit available to me. But that's not how it works. So the credit card companies will look at every single card that you have and they will check if you're using 25% or more of those individual cards. So it's card by card. It's not a accumulated it's not how much credit you've got available to you on the whole it's card by card now another reason why a credit card might be the best option for you students out there who are looking to buy say um, a macbook a laptop of any kind a big purchase basically credit cards are better than using your debit card because you have additional consumer rights lo and behold if somebody was to go ahead and get your credit card details spend 500 pounds on your card illegally you're protected so you are much more likely to get that 500 pound back because you've spent it on your credit card then if you were to have your card details stolen for your debit card and that's because the way that the banks look at is that that money on the credit card is their money if somebody takes from your debit card that's your money they're not bothered about your money it's unfortunate but it's the way it is so that's something to consider if you're buying big purchases now another question that students sometimes ask is well what happens if i have a balance on my card and the end of my course is coming up you might be a little bit worried that you still have a balance on there but what will actually happen in a lot of cases is the bank will get hold of you to let you know that your card is expiring and if you've been making regular repayments of that the card or you've been clearing the balance entirely and you just so happen to have a balance at the end then they are much more likely to then offer you um, um, a graduate account card so they might even upgrade the credit card to another one for you where you can just transfer the balance over however i wouldn't go down that route because in a lot of cases you have some credit cards available to you that will offer you a better rate of interest better that will offer you more credit better credit better terms and conditions than what those graduate cards will now is there any alternative to a student credit card and the answer would be yes yes there is you could always have a student overdraft and the student overdraft might be a better option for you. So the bank will offer you a interest-free student overdraft and assuming that you stay within that overdraft limit you won't face any interest but if there is a balance on there again at the end of your course then you may then face interest from the bank. If you found this useful please do like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications because it really does help otherwise I will see you on the next video.